Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So today we got a little brazing job that I want to do for you guys. Uh, this was sent in from one of my viewers uh, and uh, he wanted uh, me to put some pieces back together for him that were broken and uh, I thought it'd be a good opportunity uh, to talk a little bit about brazing uh, cast iron in this case. Uh, and this one actually comes from uh, one of my viewers, uh, James up in Brooklyn, New York, uh, sent this down to me and uh, basically what he's got is uh, he found a Stanley 55 plane. And if uh, you're not familiar with the Stanley number 55, it's kind of a uh, multi-purpose uh, plane for doing all kinds of uh, uh, moldings and whatever where you could put different kinds of uh, cutters and bits in there. And basically it, was, it replaced a whole plethora of wooden planes in theory, but uh, required a lot of setup to go from one setting to another. But anyway, he found one got a really good deal on it, but it had some problems. It had some uh, uh, broken pieces on it. And uh, what he's wanting me to do is come in here and actually try to put this back together uh, by brazing. So I think what I'll do is I'll zoom you guys in here so you can kind of take a look at what we're dealing with and uh, we'll kind of go through the process of uh, brazing this back together. So there's um, two separate things that need to go on here. And uh, first off is uh, this piece here. And this is a, uh, piece that uh, is a part of a fence uh, that actually I think uh, attaches to this and there's a piece of rosewood um, wood that goes on this and this basically allows you to kind of tilt it uh, to some different angles and uh, this piece is broken as you can see you got a cl nice clean break in there and uh, what we want to do is come back in here and uh, try to put this back together. Um, he asked me to braise it back together. Uh, he said that he would worry about doing the finishing work and uh, didn't want me to try to do any machining work on it. Obviously we got to get all this smoothed out. But I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and kind of walk you guys through the process of getting this prepped up uh, for brazing. And uh, then the other piece is also off the same um, uh, uh, piece. This is a, uh, uh, there's some arms that go in here that adjust this out. This is what the fence mounts to. And there's a rosewood handle uh, that kind of fits in here. And there's a piece of metal that uh, fits in here kind of like this. And um, I'm not sure exactly what was here originally, but this is what he sent me to kind of put back in there. And he wants to braise that uh, piece uh, in there kind of like that. Um, and uh, we're going to give it a shot. So I will make a few comments before I get started on this. Um, you know, all these parts are, uh, looks like they're nickel plated. And, and I told James that, you know, we would uh, do the best job we could brazing this back together. But obviously in the process of doing this, uh, the, the heating up the metal is going to burn off uh, some of the nickel plating on here. And he said, that's fine. He understands and uh, he wants to try to proceed. And, uh, you know, we're going to give this a try. Uh, we're going to see if we can make it work. I think we should be able to. Uh, and uh, James basically said, you know, I want to try to get this done as uh, repaired as cheaply as possible. Uh, if this doesn't work, uh, you can still find some replacement parts for these, uh, but they can get kind of pricey. And uh, he's wanting to try to uh, see if he can braise it back together first. So anyway, we're going to give it a shot. So before we get started uh, on brazing this back together, I want to address a couple things because every time I ever do uh, anything brazing in my videos, I get a lot of questions from folks and I'm going to go ahead and try to preempt the questions, I guess, and, uh, and cover this ahead of time. So first question I get is why are you brazing whether than, rather than welding? And uh, the reason is, is that uh, both of these, all, both of these parts that we're working on here are cast iron. And uh, while I won't say that you can't bray or can't weld uh, cast iron, welding cast iron is a pretty specialized uh, welding operation. Uh, you're, it's not something that you can just typically go out with a TIG, typical TIG setup or not TIG, but MIG setup or a um, uh, stick welder and just weld it back together. Because of the structure of the steel and cast iron, it's, it's more of a crystalline type structure. It takes some pretty special setups to do that. So you can stick weld it, uh, but you need to use like a nickel welding rod. 
uh, and it takes a lot of preheating and getting the part uh, put back together just right. I have done some uh, nickel welding before uh, with a stick welder and I'll be honest with you, my experience has not been that great with it. I know that there are some people out there who are very good at it, uh, who have really honed their skills and can do that. Uh, but I personally find brazing works better for me. Uh, and then the other question I get is why not TIG, uh, use a TIG uh, welding setup to do that, do this operation. And, and that's definitely an option, particularly on sm something small like this. Uh, I really like uh, TIG, and you can do that again using a nickel uh, rod or even a, 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 a bronze rod like I'm going to use for brazing. You can do that with a, a TIG setup. And when you have a small parts like this that don't have a lot of mass in them, uh, the TIG setup is really nice. Uh, my problem is, is I don't have access to TIG. I used to have access to TIG back when I was uh, working in the machine shop. But right now, I just don't, I don't have it. So uh, that's really not an option for me, uh, which kind of leads me to the brazing. And the brazing is what I typically do with cast iron repair work. Uh, why? Because I've got a torch set up. It's fairly uh, straightforward on how to do it. Um, I've got a lot of practice with it. I have developed some pretty good skills with it. And uh, that's what I'm comfortable doing. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. So with brazing, basically what we're doing is we're using a dissimilar metal to join this together. And again, the, the base metal is going to be cast iron. And we're going to use these uh, brazing rods, which is actually bronze a bronze type material uh, and we will kind of lay that, that in there and uh, use this to join it together. If you have a good brazing, um, if you do a good job with your brazing, it actually makes a very strong repair. I won't say it's as strong as the original cast iron, uh, but it's not far from it. And uh, you can have very satisfactory results uh, with brazing. And again, this is kind of what I have most experience with and what I'm most comfortable doing, which is usually uh, my go-to method of doing it. So let's get in here and get this prepped up and uh, we'll show you how we put this together. So I think we're gonna start with this piece here and uh, obviously we got that break in there so I threw that hole. But uh, what we wanna do before we even start doing anything else is probably the most important part of brazing is doing a good job in prepping uh, your metal to get it ready. Uh, to brace back together. And uh, to do that on this, what I want to do is I want to make sure it's just absolutely clean and that we have nice ground out uh, raw metal uh, that we're going to be brazing to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the grinder and I'll probably start with the wire wheel and just kind of polish everything, buff everything. In this case, um, it's got a nickel plating on it. I want to get all that plating um, off of it, at least in the general vicinity of where I'm going to be welding. And then I'm going to come in here and uh, we'll actually grind out a V. Uh, you know, with uh, putting this together, you got uh, the natural break in here, and that really kind of gives you a nice uh, surface to register that to get it back together. That's the nice thing when you get a break in cast iron. It's really easy to register it back together because that crystalline structure in the in the uh, cast iron really gives you something to kind of register the pieces together. So I want to leave some of that in there, but at the same time I want to V out a good bit of that, and that's where that, that new metal is going to flow down into and allow it to really kind of grip together. We want to V out almost all of that metal eventually. I'm going to start with, uh, I'm probably going to start uh, with this side here because um, this bottom is kind of flat and that'll give me something to clamp it on to, to kind of get a surface to register against. And But we will V that out after we weld this side together. So I'm going to go ahead, again, take it to the grinder and uh, we'll clean everything up, probably do it off camera and grind in some V's. We'll bring you back in a minute and show you what we got. So I've got this uh, part now pretty much all prepped up and uh, set up and ready to braze. So as you can see, we came in here and again, we V'd out uh, this area in here and that's where we're gonna concentrate all our braze on. And also did a good cleaning job all around this and a ways from it so that uh, any, it's not gonna suck any contaminant down in there as we're welding this together. So uh, I've got this mounted on a block of steel here. It's just clamped down and then uh, pulled together and we left enough material in here where we V to still let that grain in there kind of hold it all together real well. And uh, it's, it was, it is hold, held together really nice right now. 
So uh, we're pretty much ready to come in here and uh, start putting some heat on this and brazing this together. So anyway, we're ready to roll. So we're ready to go now. I've got my um, torch set up here with a brazing tip. Um, we're going to just start by uh, heating this up and getting some heat bit put in there. So let's uh, fire up here. We don't want to get in too big of a hurry while we're heating up this metal. We want to just kind of let the heat saturate in here and um, try to heat up, you know, get heat over the entire part. Not just try to concentrate in one area, but try to spread that heat out and uh, heat it up rather slowly. Now in this situation, I have a block of steel up underneath it and uh, that's going to serve as a heat sink or it maybe not, it's not really ideal, but we need that for setup. So, you know, I've got to get some heat transferred down into that base as well and uh, to, to get a nice even heat. And uh, we're just going to concentrate some heat on here. We're going to take our time. And what we want to do is get this uh, area that we're brazing heated up to a nice uh, cherry red color. And uh, we'll probably take you out here and uh, just uh, take our time putting some heat on here and bring you back in a minute. So we're starting to get some color in here now, starting to get about to that brazing temperature. And again, I really want to make sure I've got that base heated up good as well, uh, so that it's not pulling all that heat out of it too quickly. But uh, we're about ready to start brazing, so I've got my brazing rod here, and I'm just going to heat up the bottom of it a little bit. This uh, particular brazing rod that I'm using here is bare rod, it doesn't have any flux on it. So uh, I've got a can of flux over here, and after I heat it up, I just kind of dip it down in there. Uh, you want to have some good flux. Uh, as to whether you use the pre-flux rods or use or add flux to the rods, it's personal preference. I actually prefer adding my own flux to the rods just simply because it kind of lets me control it. All right, so our piece moved. I'm going to shut off my torch and. Um, we're gonna to have to reset this while it's hot. Less than ideal. Let me get a pair of pliers. All right, we've got our temperature back in here now. We're about ready to start brazing again. And what I want to do is get this heated up to a nice cherry red. I want to get some flux down in this uh, area here that we're going to be welding in. Kind of melt plenty of flux down in there. And we just let the braze just kind of flow right down into the part. And I built it up a little bit higher there. Uh, we can always come back out in here afterwards and uh, smooth this out. Probably good for that side. We 
Maybe you can get some uh, flux down in here. We're going to let this cool down nice and slow now. And then we'll flip it over. We'll grind out the bottom and do it. I think that's good enough for the top. While this other piece is cooling, I have um, come over here and set up uh, the second piece that needs to be braced together. And uh, again, getting this thing properly set up is half the challenge. So I've gone in here and V'd out, again, uh, an area in there, this little cross piece. And uh, I needed to get everything really held in place real well. So I took a couple of angle plates here. We got this large angle plate that's in the back, a smaller angle plate mounted on here that I can adjust up and down. And then on this, I just literally clamped this fence. So this should be square uh, in both directions. Uh, and I checked that with a level just to make sure and uh, we got a block down here that's just sim simply uh, just something that this piece is resting on and everything is lined up right where I want it to be and uh, it's just kind of kind of being held in place as long as I don't bump it we should be fine uh, but as you can see we've used uh, a l several pieces here to get this set up we got a couple of angle plates a clamp here and what have you uh, to get everything going and and I, I like the setup we've got. Uh, I think this is going to be good. So we've already got this cleaned up and prepped. So we're going to go ahead and put some heat in there. And uh, we'll brace these in place as well. All right, we'll let that cool down. We've let this first piece cool down now, and uh, I went ahead and cleaned it up a little bit. 
on the wire wheel um, and we flipped it over and on the brake on the bottom we again we just ground a V in there and I just did that on on the grinder just using a grindstone I could have used a die grinder uh, but now I want to come in here and actually put some braids in the bottom of this and uh, that will hopefully give it some more strength and uh, we'll be through with this piece so uh, we're just going to set it here again on this piece there's no reason to clamp it this time uh, it should all hold together so uh, let's put some heat on there and braise it in place All right, we're going to let that cool down. Back to the handle now. I have brought this over. We've set it up in a vise uh, where I can get to it real good. I've come in here with a die grinder and just kind of ground this out uh, and got me good clean metal in there and also took some of that cast iron out to get down below that surface. And uh, this is now ready to heat up and uh, We'll just add a little bat dab of braise on either side there, and uh, hopefully this piece here will be finished up. So uh, let's fire up the torch, and we'll get this going too.
and that should be good enough. We'll let that cool down. All right, James, uh, here you go. Uh, we've got these sprays back together. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Uh, as you requested, I haven't cleaned any of these up. I was gonna send these back to you and let you do that. So we should have plenty of material here that you can uh, kind of grind off and get back down. As we were brazing the bottom of this, we had some kind of run up and puddle up underneath it. It was wanting to kind of suck it down. Uh, so you got a little bit of material to remove there, but uh, you should be able to, between some grinding and a couple of files, I don't think it'll be too much trouble to get this cleaned off on either side. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the results. Uh, I think that that should hold up for you fine and you should be able to, uh, with the, the V-ing out that we did, you should be able to, at least on this piece, take that down, <coughs> excuse me, almost all the way back down to the bare metal and still have plenty of braids in there to hold it in place. And on this one, I might want to leave a little bit um, radius in these corners uh, just for some strength, but I think you'll be fine there as well. So there you go, uh, Brazing 101. And, uh, you know, we got some cleanup work, or James has some cleanup work to do, but uh, I think this will work just fine for what he's after. So there you go, uh, quick brazing job. Uh, hope you learned a little bit in there. Hope you uh, picked some tips up that can help you with brazing. I will say, guys, that, you know, the biggest secret to learning how to braze is just get out there and practice. Uh, it's very handy for putting cast iron pieces together. You can put steel together with it. Uh, when I first learned to braise was back in uh, high school and we were using mostly just band iron and brazing it back together in, in shop class. But uh, the beauty of brazing is, is that you can really put together a lot of different kinds of materials with it. You can even put dissimilar types of material. You can weld or braise uh, steel onto cast iron, for example. Uh, but it's, I, I find that using the similar material really makes it easier, particularly when you're starting to learn, uh, just to help get the heat in there correctly. Uh, if you're using steel and cast iron, one side will heat up hotter than the other faster, and it's just a little bit more tricky to get it just right. So if you're practicing or learning, you know, you start with similar materials, but as you get some experience, you can uh, put together dissimilar materials. One other comment I wanted to mention is I was, I was talking earlier about uh, TIG torch and, and how that was handy on small parts like this and I didn't really finish my thought but that is when I'm well are brazing together larger cast iron pieces I prefer using a torch over the TIG uh, just simply because I can saturate a lot of heat into a larger part and saturate that heat into the part a lot better. If I was going to use a TIG torch on something larger than this, something that had a lot of mass to it, I would want to preheat everything real well before I got the TIG torch out and started putting that focused heat right in there. Uh, TIG works real well on small stuff, uh, but quite honestly, when I start uh, putting together larger pieces, more massive pieces of cast iron, I prefer the torch. Uh, the flame torch over the TIG torch. So anyway, there you go. Hopefully you guys will uh, again uh, pick something up out of this and hopefully it'll help you with your brazing uh, if you need to repair some cast iron or other pieces. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot.